Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is launching Office 365 files like Microsoft Excel from Power Automate Desktop without an on-premises data gateway. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. Some organizations have restrictions on how the on-premises data gateways are deployed within their tenants or their organization. And what this does is it creates some challenges when you have cloud hosted files such as those in Office 365 and you want to be able to open and manipulate those files with desktop applications like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, etc. And so this becomes a challenge because you can't send the file from the cloud to the desktop uh, through the gateway and then just pass the location of the local file um, because the gateway doesn't exist and currently in Power Automate Desktop the only types of inputs are text. You've got sort of your regular text, plus you've got some secured or sensitive inputs as well. But those are not meant for binary files, like if you have like an Excel document or some sort of image. Um, so, so that creates an issue. But what we can do is we can essentially work around this scenario by using the command line action that exists inside of Power Automate Desktop. And so what we can do is go ahead and pass the URL for the file, perhaps it's in SharePoint, pass that down as an input as text, just the location, then use the command line action in Power Automate Desktop to open the desktop application such as Microsoft Excel, and then pass in as a parameter the location of the file, the link to the file. And once you have that open, then you can go ahead and manipulate that file using the actions found in Power Automate Desktop. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Power Automate Desktop. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to CloudFlows and then we're gonna go ahead and call this specific desktop flow and then sort of connect the dots and, and run it end to end. Now there's two inputs that are required. Number one is we need a file path. And this will represent the entire path to our document. Now what I've experienced thus far is that when you do have SharePoint, you can go ahead and you know share a document and it generates like a, a random link with some sort of random sequence of characters. Now I found that that didn't work well with a downstream step. We're gonna get into attaching to a running Excel document, that's where things became a little bit challenging. So you do want to have your link in a format that looks very similar to how you would access it through a web browser, right? So you've got the base URL, then you've got like the subfolders, and then you've got the name of the document itself. So I've provided this as my default value. I have wrapped it in quotes just because of the space here. Uh, when we do want to go ahead and pass it into a command line parameter, that space is going to cause some challenges for us. So that's our, our file path. And then the other input I've got is file name. And we're going to see this being used when we attach to our running Excel. So two input parameters. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open a command line session. So if we head over to actions, just type CMD, we are going to see the related uh, command line action. So this is essentially the equivalent of, of opening up a command line window and then being able to go ahead and execute a command. So that's what we do is we open up the command session and then what we go ahead and do is we go ahead and write to that command session. And here what we're going to do is we're going to pass essentially the path to Microsoft Excel and then what we're going to do is pass in that that input parameter, the file path. So the entire URL for our document found in Office 365. And then naturally we want to send an enter after the command so that it'll go ahead and launch this file inside of Excel. So we're basically, it's much like calling it from a command line parameter and that's exactly what we're doing here. And so that's, that's that piece. Now what I've done is I have introduced a wait period. And so the reason for this is that Excel will take a few seconds to go ahead and launch. And so this is almost like an asynchronous call where you basically hit enter in the command line session and then the process spawns and actually then executes. Now if you try to attach too quickly, the application won't actually be up yet when you're trying to attach 
that's going to cause an issue. So that's why we've introduced a delay. You know, this is something that when you're doing cloud flows would be a bit of a warning sign, but the reality when you have desktop automation is you're going to have to sometimes include weights. Now, next up, we're going to go ahead and attach to a running Excel. And so we can find this if we go ahead and search for Excel. We will find attached to running Excel there. And then what we need to do is provide a document name. And so in this case, we're going to provide a file name, which will be just the file name itself, not the full path or anything like that, just the file name itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get an instance of Excel. And we need an instance of Excel if we're going to go ahead and use any of these different actions that are available to us. And so that's why we're going to go ahead and attach to this running Excel. Now, this is just arbitrary just for the purposes of this demo. I want to prove to you that I can go ahead and grab that instance of Excel and then do something with it. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and extract a value from column one, row two. Um, but if I needed to write, I could go ahead and use this same Excel instance to go right to that spreadsheet. But just once again, proving to you that this is, is attached. Uh, then what I'm going to do, once again, just to, for the purposes of a demo, I'm going to go ahead and just display that information. So that was essentially the previous step. We stored the output of reading from Excel into a variable called Excel data. So that's what's happening here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and close out our Excel file itself. So that's our desktop flow. Let me just pivot over to CloudFlows and show you what's going on over there. Okay, so now I'm in the Power Automate Maker Portal. I do have my CloudFlow here. It's got, it's pretty simple. It's got to manually trigger a flow. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and get file metadata for a specific file in a folder, right? So if we pivot over to SharePoint here, I've got a file called workorders.xlsx and this is the file that I'm interested in. So we're gonna go ahead and just get the metadata associated to it. Now, we could make this further dynamic. Uh, there's no question, like perhaps we could have an email trigger that pulls off attachments, stores the attachment into SharePoint, and then use a very similar model here um, in order to dynamically retrieve those files. So that's quite possible, but that's not the purpose of, of this particular video, so I'm not gonna go too far down that path. Uh, what I will do is get the, the file metadata. So what this is going to return for me is essentially the path. Um, basically this, this location right here, shared documents, work orders, work orders .xlsx. You know, I could go ahead and hard code this as well if it was always had a static path. But um, you know, here we are. I'm just going to show you that action itself. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a compose just to concatenate my base URL with the dynamic path that was returned. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find an easy way to go ahead and dynamically retrieve the SharePoint site itself. So here, I've just gone ahead and hard-coded that. I'm sure if I dug deeper into a graph, I could go ahead and find it. But once again, not the purpose of this particular uh, demo. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and call that desktop flow that I just showed you. And it's going to be run and attended. I'm going to wrap the outputs with those quotes. Once again, want to make sure that when we pass that into a command line, that it's able to handle the space when we talk about shared space documents. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to provide that display name. Uh, remember when we want to attach to that running Excel, I'm going to pass that in as well. And I'm going to get this from, once again, that get file metadata um, outputs, right? So I can go ahead and get the display name, and then we'll use that to find the Excel instance that we can go ahead and attach to. So that's kind of a, the background of how this was created. Now what I can go ahead and do is let's go ahead and run it. I may pause the recording for a little bit. This will take you know typically 30 seconds to kick off and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, so there we go. So what's happened is it's gone ahead and retrieved the first column, second row, the value from there. And then when I go ahead and click OK, we're going to now close out Excel. So let's go ahead, let's just take a look at our parameters. See, here's our file path that was sent in, and then the file name itself. And so that is one way 
of being able to open Office 365 or cloud-related files without needing the use of a gateway. Now, it is one of those things where a gateway does have many purposes. If you need to call on-premise APIs, like you're going to run into a situation where you need a gateway. But for some organizations there's where there's concerns about the proliferation of gateways or spreading out too much access as it pertains to files, uh, this is one way where you can go ahead and to connect back to the cloud with a desktop app like Excel without having to go ahead and install the on-premise data gateway. So this might be a scenario that helps you work around some of the perhaps governance challenges that, that do exist inside your organization. Okay, so that concludes another video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Uh, obviously, you're on YouTube. Any likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. So thanks again for your time, and we'll catch you again on the channel. Thanks, and take care. Bye.